Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I actually, I thought winter had arrived in the UK this morning. Uh, I, I went outside and it was, it was very, very cold. There was frost on the car um, and it was, oh, that's depressing. It's a depressing thought. We've had, we've had some quite lovely weather, mostly for the last couple of weeks uh but it it's it's all gone wrong although it's 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 nice again now um anyway we are going to cheer ourselves up um and uh, and look away from the teeth of winter arriving soon by having a look at arithmetic quiz philomeno by m nasty 2 um now this is a sequel puzzle to one of the most popular puzzles that we've published in the last year or so uh which was if i could i think i did load it up this one arithmetic quiz which was done in sudoku form um and this was so popular you voted it into our into our book um the book that is is being published as we speak um and it's just lovely you know it's a series of nine different sums and you have to put you know sudoku digits in to make the sums work an absolutely beautiful idea well anyway M Nasty 2 has now done the same thing with a Philomeno puzzle. Don't worry if you don't know what Philomeno is. I will explain the rules of Philomeno in a moment or two's time. Um, apparently this is very approachable as, as that earlier puzzle was. So do have a go at this. If you're scared by the thought of a Philomeno puzzle or even a Sudoku puzzle, do not worry. Cracking the Cryptic is here to hold your hand and entrance you uh, and enthrall you with this world of variant Sudokus and logic puzzles which quite frankly can become a bit of an obsession. Uh, <laughs> now, I'll read you the rules of this one in a moment or two's time. I've got a few things to mention first. It's busy times on the channel. Let me think, what do I need to, what do I need to tell you about? Um, our new Line Sudoku app is out. So if you've been waiting for that and there's, well, you, we know many of you have been waiting for a long time. It is out. It, 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 it's got handcrafted puzzles by some of the best constructors in the world in it. Um, so we commend that to you. It's obviously out on Android, on Apple and on Steam. Um, loads of you, literally, well, literally hundreds, we might be up to thousands now, uh, of you have been trying the Trick or Treat Sudoku Hunt, which is our monthly reward over on Patreon. Definitely um, have a look at that if you haven't had a look at it already. Uh, this is the sort of flyer for it. Um, and don't forget, even if you have or you think you have finished all the puzzles, there are 11 hidden puzzles in that pack. And there is a video on Patreon right now from Rock Rat Zero explaining how to reach those hidden puzzles. Um, and you've still got another five days if you'd like to enter that competition. Um, the hidden puzzles are nothing to do with the competition. They are purely there uh, as, a, as an extra freebie. Um, there's also Mark's crossword video on Patreon right now in which he tackles the club monthly special um, from the Times, which is a vicious cryptic crossword. This is all preparation, of course, for next weekend's big Times Crossword Championship taking place next Saturday. The first Times Crossword Championship there has been since COVID, so the first one in four years. Um, so yeah, Mark and I are going to be at that, which, which should be good fun. Um, and maybe we'll see some of you there. We don't know. Um, and what else was there? There was something else I was meant to mention. Oh, I don't know, but I, I've got some shout outs to do. I'm going to say thank you to Adam. Adam, thank you for your email. It meant a lot to us. Um, and I'm going to say happy birthday to Natalie. Natalie, who has turned an age today, that is the difference between two secrets. I think I can tell you what those secrets are. One of them is the secret of Sudoku. So some of you will know what that is. And one of them is the secret number you cannot put on a German whispers line. So the difference between those two numbers is Natalie's age today. So ha many happy returns, Natalie. I know this, of course, because your wife Charlotte wrote to us. Um, and Charlotte, I was sorry to hear about the loss of your stepdad, Phil Dixie Dean, um, and our condolences. And also, apparently, you, you both lost your cat this year as well. So let us hope that um, let us hope that going forwards everything is better. And I know you've got two new cats, Barney and George, and I hope that they are they are settling in well. Um, anyway, Natalie, have a great birthday today, and I hope that you're going to have some chocolate cake. Um, and that's all the news. Just one birthday today to do today. Now, let me read you the rules of Arithmetic Quiz Phenomeno by M Nasty 2. Um, they are as follows. We have to divide the grid into regions of orthogonally connected cells such that no two regions of the same size share an edge. Now, fortunately, 
And there's another bit of this rule. It says each cell contains a single digit equal to its region's single digit size. Um, so let me show you an example. So this is an example of a Philomeno puzzle without the equations in it. And if, if you look at the grid, um, you can see M nasty 2 has actually coloured the regions of different sizes appropriately. So the size 3 regions are both red. There's a purple 8 region, uh, a yellow 5 region, two blue 2 regions and two green 1 size regions. Now if you stare at this grid you'll see that the, the regions of size 2, so that's these two, they do not share an edge, do they? And that is a, an important requirement of the rules. The two regions of size 3 do not share an edge. Um, and the whole grid is divided and into each cell has been entered a number equal to the size of its region. So it's, it's, Philomeno is a very simple rule. Um, and oh, and you might wonder, what does orthogonally connected, regions of orthogonally connected cells? Well, if you study all of these regions, you will see that they all... Um, they all you can go from one cell to another in in these regions by crossing an edge you you never cross diagonally um, so imagine this cell we tried to put that as a five into that region that would not be allowed because these two cells they meet at a point they don't share an edge therefore this cell could not be part of the five region so orthogonally is a posh way of saying shares an edge these two cells are orthogonally connected, these two cells are not. Um, now, we've got these equations to do. So each numbered row contains an equation in the grey outlines that must be completed. So we've got five equations to do. Um, oh, look, that's weird the way that works. So in this, what we're being told is that this number divided by this number is equal to that number. Um, a two-cell pill represents a two-digit number. Oh, I see. well, yeah, that's what I would have assumed. So what that's saying is if this number was, I don't know, 34, then we would read this as a 34. It's not three and then four. I mean, how else would we read it? I don't know. Um, and that's all the rules. That's literally all the rules. Now, this has one star out of difficulty on Logic Master Germany, so there's no excuse for not having a go at it. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And the great thing about Philomeno is that we can instantly get cracking because these numbers, we have to, we have to make sure that these are in regions of their size so the one region what color was one in the example let's copy the colors so one was green right we'll make that green the two re the two was blue i remember so that two region must grow here mustn't it because it can't it can't grow into regions of size one or three so the two can only go out there and therefore we have to fill in a two in this square so we've got we've got two times something equals something but um, now, does that... There's just one question I had there when I suddenly, suddenly thought about this. Right, here is a small point that is important. Each cell contains a single digit equal to its region's single digit size. So what we can't... In Philomeno puzzles generally, you cannot assume that um, regions are only of size 1 through 9. You could have a 20 region. Indeed, I've seen many brilliant Philomeno puzzles where there's normally one massive region that occupies an enormous space in the grid. Here, we're told that cannot be true. We're not allowed to write, say, 12 into this square. That has to be a single digit. Now, that means what we're doing here is we're multiplying 2 by a single digit number to equal a double digit number. Well, therefore, this square, I think, has to be a 1. Um, the minimum this could be, well, I suppose I was going to say the minimum this can be is 5, but it can't be 5, because 2 times 5, we'd have to put a 0 in here. And there is no such thing in Philomeno as a zero-sized a zero region. That's, um, that's a concept even the scientist in The Simpsons wouldn't understand. Um, so, so this is at least a 6, I think we're being told. So this is 6, 7, 8, or 9. And this digit is 2, 4, 6, or 8. It's got to be even. 
Okay, so now, so now this cell is green because that's another one size region, isn't it? This cell here is a different color to this one and this one. So this needs its own color. Let's make that mm, purple. Um, this one, oh, no, that one could be, that one could be blue again if that's a two. The three though, that has to get out, doesn't it? That's got to be a three. What color was I meant to, oh, three was red, I remember from the example. So three is red. These two are both red. Uh, four. Well, the four doesn't have to go here. It could dip down. And the five can obviously go in a variety of places. It could, obviously it could go into the equation, but we don't, we don't know, I think. Uh, that digit is a three or a four because we're adding, we've got a 30 something number to which we're adding a single digit number. So this is either 30 something or 40 something. Right, so maybe this square is where we look because whatever this number is, it's not one and it's not two because if it was one or two, it would share a border with a region of its own size. So that's at least three. Now what that means is that at least three size region must grow. So these two cells are the same, which, oh, which could go there actually. Wow, <laughs> this is actually really clever. This, this is purple. Both of, both of these squares are indisputably purple if you can see why that is well done if you can't see why that is just pause the video and give yourself a moment or two to work out why these two squares are definitely purple it's beautiful actually for those of you who managed to do it congratulations the reason is imagine these were not purple so they don't go into this this region here we know this square is at least a three so these three would have to be, uh, let's pick a color, let's make them yellow. These three would all be the same number, whatever that number was, whether it's three or four or five, whatever this number is, these three would all be part of that region. But that makes this equation equal 11, I think. Because imagine this was 33 divided by three, that would be 11, 44 divided by four would be 11, 55 divided by five, etc., etc. They'd all be 11, but this cannot be one next to one because of the rules of phenomena. You can't put a one size region next to another region of size one. So this doesn't work. And that tells you that this is purple. So these squares are now, they're big actually. They're at least equal to this. Uh, yeah, and, and, and also, of course, this is not purple because otherwise we'd just get 11 here again. So this is something new that's not one. So hmm. So this, ooh, this is tricky now. I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure I'm seeing how that works. I can't make it work with two. Uh, Okay, I'm going to come back to that in a moment um, because this purple has to grow. It's at least size six, so it's got to grow here. So, so now this is at least six. Um, so this is 30 at least six. Oh, well, hang on. Six, is six, seven, eight or nine are not equal to three. So that's got to be a three. Gosh, this is lovely so far. It's not, it's not necessarily difficult, but it's lovely, right? Those two have both got to be four. Did four have a color? No, four did not have a color. Okay, so we can, we can award four any color. We, I'm gonna make it yellow then. Uh, was, was one of those yellow? Oh, five was yellow. Have I got, oh, hang on. No, I'm not allowed to make it yellow. Let's make it um, or orange or gray. I don't know if, if I make that gray, is it, yeah, you can still see it. I'm gonna make this gray because if I make it orange, it's a bit close in color to, to red. Um, so either this is four or this is four to complete the fours. The three is complete. The six, seven, eight or nine. Now I could go in a variety of directions now, I think. 
gosh, it would be very powerful, wouldn't it? If if purple goes to this square, then we've got a, a single digit number plus a purple number has got to equal a single digit number. Well, this would have to be three plus six equals nine. Um, I'm not sure that might be possible. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Uh, so maybe, maybe I am going to have to think about the right. So what we what we've deduced is that these two digits are the same, and that, and possibly. I mean, it's possible all three of those digits are the same, depending on depending on how this region grows. If indeed it does grow, it could just be a two into both those squares. But I didn't think when I just did this in my head, I couldn't see how this would work because I've got I've got a number that's 66, 77, 88 or 99 divided by two has to equal 20 something. Well, that just doesn't work, does it? So two doesn't work. So we're dividing by three at least. Oh yeah, I see how it works. Right, okay. So there is only one way that this works because, um, well, three will work. Three will work with one of the options here. Um, it's really, it's lovely. It's a lovely idea again. Let, I mean, let's just look at why three works. If we put three into both of those squares, well, in fact, you're going to have to put three there as well because this is even. Um, so we've got one of the, we've got 66, 77, 88 or 99 divided by three equals 33. We can see this will work with 99 uh, only. Now, if we make this four, on the other hand, any of the any 66, 77, 88 or 99 divided by four does not equal 40 something. So any bigger number just doesn't work. So we must be looking at threes. We must be looking at nines. Ah, well, hang on. This is going to this is going to mean this can't be purple. Um, because 3 plus 9 is 12 and 12 is not a single digit number. There is a knowledge bomb for you. So we have to go here. We have to go here. We've got we've got to be really careful about this. Purple 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 so far. Oh, this is this is a 6 by by the simplest of math. 3 plus something equals 9. So that's a 6. Uh, 6. Did 6 have its own colour? I can't remember. Let's go back over here. Uh, no, six six wasn't included. So this needs it. So I'm going to have to make that orange, I think. So that's got to come down here to grow. The four is now going here to grow. And we said that was grey. The five was yellow, wasn't it, in the example? So we'll make all of these five. Uh, the four is complete. Um, so we've got 40 something plus something minus something equals something. Um... <laughs> And OK. Oh, look, here's something easy. We've got 39 plus 9. Well, that's 48, isn't it? So that's 48. 4, we know, is a grey number. 8, we know, is... I have a feeling 8 was purple on that example. It was. Oh, bobbins. So I haven't got a good colour for this. Uh... I really don't actually I could make it black maybe is that black distinguishable from the gray I think it is um, oh hang on look two times nine that's got to be an eight has that been available for ages it probably has I just didn't see it I wasn't thinking about it so these two squares are therefore black this three region is done uh, this four region has to grow so that's got to grow down there. Now four was grey, so so now that's pushing the nine. Oh, it's just, just lovely. It's just such got a, such a good flow to it. Now the six region has to grow, so that has to come all the way down there. So now we've got forty six plus six. We're on fifty two minus something. So this is a four or a five, depending on how small this is. Nine has to grow again. I haven't actually. Let's see if I got too many nines now. No, I haven't got enough nines. I've only got eight in my nine, so it depends what this is. Is that nine or not? The four has to grow. That's still not grown enough. The five has to grow to to be core eight. The six has to grow. Oh, that, hang on, that wasn't what I thought was going to happen there. What's gone on there? I've got six, six, six. I found, I've 
I'm the devil in the puzzle. Um, okay, well, no, it's fine. It's What it's saying is 46 plus 6 minus 6. Well, by my maths, that it still equals 46 then. So that's 4, that's 6, and that's... Ooh, okay, so that's grey, but this grey can't now come here because this square... Um, well, for many reasons, including the fact it would cut off the 9, which I've suddenly realised has to grow. So the 9 grows, the 4 grows. This 4 has to grow down to there. This 6 has to grow. Uh, this is it's just very cute, this. How does this 4 reach a total of 4? It, it's, it's got to go round this corner now. And this is where we find we've run out of room because I've still got a six to put in here, which is going to go at least to there. <laughs> no, OK, it's done. <laughs> the puzzle is finished, we can say at this point, because look, I've got an eight region. I've only put three cells into it. And here I've got a six region that I've only put one cell into it. So I need five more cells for this six region. And that would be. So it, and it must come to at least here, but it could never come further than this because that will mean the eight couldn't get enough cells. So the eight must take those squares and the six must take these squares and the six is an orange region. And I think, let's just check, 99 divided by three is 33. Two times nine is 18. 39 plus nine is 48. Three plus six is nine and 46 plus 6 minus 6 is still 46. So I think that's right. Let's see if it likes it. Yay! A, A plus wow. That's brilliant. I loved that. That was absolutely lovely. It's been solved a lot of times as well. So 189 times in the last month, but hopefully that'll go up to about 189,000 times uh, in the next month. Um, M nasty 2. Well, if we make another book, if we make another book, I'm sure this will get voted into it. It should do. It's really, it's exactly the sort of puzzle that you hope for to introduce. Um, introduce pe either people to Philomeno or, you know, newcomers to puzzles generally. Um, it's it's ah, just very enjoyable. Nothing too, but no, I was going to say nothing too taxing. And it wasn't too taxing, but it was this bit is really nice. The fact that if you extend this just to that square, you get 11, which can't ever work in a phenomeno. I think that's how the puzzle's been designed to, to purely, you know, play off this idea. And it's very, very nice indeed. So very cool setting. Loved it. Let me know in the comments how you got on with it. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.